Hi, I'm Alan at the plant farm. I wanted to take a moment and talk to you about fertilizer. I think there's an awful lot of confusion out there in the world of fertilizer. So I wanted to explain to you some basics and tell you what we use. It's confusing to go and see all the different numbers of fertilizer. And typically, I think the average consumer just begins to shop on price, which is the absolute wrong thing to do. You really want to look deeper at the numbers that are on the fertilizer. But quite simply, as a grower, I'm going to tell you, I use Peter's fertilizer. I've used it for years. And here in our retail setting, we sell Jack's or Jack Peter's fertilizer. And there's a reason. Because truthfully, as we've used it in the industry, it is the best water-soluble fertilizer that we've found. And they make it retail ready in these smaller packages. And so I think to help us make the right decisions, let's talk a little bit about how these numbers are created and what we're looking for in our plant material. First and foremost, right here you can see we've got an all-purpose fertilizer. It's 20, 20, 20. That means for every 100 pounds of fertilizer, there's 20 pounds of nitrogen, 20 pounds of phosphorus, and 20 pounds of potash. There's 40 pounds of who knows what else. If you look on the back, you'll see some of the fine print. And that fine print tells you what's in those remaining 40 pounds. So let me tell you a little bit about what we see in the fine print. I can see here that we've got boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. Now those are all trace minerals that we need for the health of our plants, our general purpose plants. So using a fertilizer like this, you're probably going to take care of most of your plants. They would be happy. But we want to sometimes get more specific. If you're one of the people who like to have those giant hanging baskets in the summertime, petunias are blooming and they grow about four feet out of the basket, that's not accidentally done. A lot of it has to do with the feed, and that feed has got to be a well-balanced feed on pH. Not only that, with petunias, they're heavy feeders, and they have a high demand for iron because they're not efficient. So we've got to take the iron to them and make it available. The reason that I strongly recommend Jack's, it's the only fertilizer I know that has three different kinds of chelated iron that are available to a plant from a broad range of pHs. Now you say, well, what's pH? Well, it quite simply has to do with the ability of the plant to absorb nutrients. And so in the case of a lower pH, which is what petunias need, the plant is able to absorb nutrients relatively easy. But if our pH begins to rise up toward 7, for instance, all of a sudden the ability for the plant to uptake iron is restricted. With our Peters, Jack's fertilizer, the petunias are still able to absorb iron with a rising pH. So notice on this particular formulation, it's 20, 6, 22. We're using 20 pounds of nitrogen per 100 pounds of fertilizer. But more importantly, when you look at the fine print, and you should on every different container of fertilizer, you should always look at the fine print. What you're going to find is they've derived their nitrogen, their 20 pounds of nitrogen, from three different nitrogen sources. Some of it's nitrate. You say, well, what's nitrate versus ammoniacal or urea, which is the other two? Nitrate is like eating steak in the morning. It's what builds your muscles. If you go to the ammoniacal, it's like eating pizza all day long. You just kind of get fat and happy. So the plant actually has to take the nitrate and break it down into the ammoniacal to begin to use it. 
So it makes your plant just a little stronger, stiffer, more compact and resistant to the weather. And then the final thing that you see here, they've used a quite a bit of urea in the petunia feed. And the reason, of course, is we want our petunias to get big fast. Now you can't do that in the early spring when the weather's cold. Urea is something that you got to be careful to use only when you've got temperature and plenty of sunlight because it takes that kind of energy to convert the urea. Otherwise what happens, our urea gets awfully hot and our plants get really rangy quick. And then finally you see you've got your other two, your phosphorus and your potash. And those, those two elements are very important. There's also the miners there. And finally there's one other fertilizer I wanted to talk about. And this would be our houseplant fertilizer. Now we do an awful lot of houseplants here at Creech Greenhouse or the plant farm. In fact, we do uh, about a half an acre greenhouse all year long. And we're constantly in there propagating new plants, rooting them, growing them, and selling them into the northwest part of the United States. Uh, some of that stuff's delivered directly on our trucks and other, others are delivered uh, via produce trucks. But quite simply, when we look at this, we see that we've got 1530. So 30 is our phosphorus number. Phosphorus is good for our stems, and a lot of our house plants have got stems, lots of stems. So we want good, strong stems, long stems, stems that grow upward with strength. That's what our house plant's going to do. And then as I look on the back in the fine print, I see also there's a lot of urea. And my house plants, I keep them warm. That greenhouse stays 70 degrees year round, if not warmer. And I want my leaves to expand and get really big. That's what the urea is gonna do for me. So here's three different types of house plants. And hopefully what we've done is we've eliminated some of the confusion about choosing the right fertilizer. Don't use the economics. Actually look on the container and ask yourself, what is the price per pound of the key elements if you're all about economics? And you'll find that many of these fertilizers are much more economical than some of the less expensive ones that you find on the shelf. I'm Alan. That's been a little bit of a long video, but explaining fertilizer takes a little bit. So I hope that helps you. Enjoy your gardening.